Hey everybody, it's Lon Sivan, and we're taking a look today at a really attractive Windows tablet from Huawei. This is called the MateBook. It is a 12-inch, uh, very slim tablet, and it is powered by a Core M processor. they got a couple different configurations that I will talk about in a minute, as well as some accessories you can get with it also. Really attractive device, and we'll be putting it through its paces here very shortly. I do want to mention, though, in the interest of full disclosure, that this is on loan from Huawei. So when I'm done with this, I pack it up and send it back to them. All the opinions you're about to here, therefore, are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. This is probably the nicest looking and feeling Windows tablet I have seen here on the channel. It's very uh, nicely constructed. It feels as nice as it looks. Very solid feeling. Uh, it's got very nice glass on the front, metal on the back. It uh, really feels solid and reminds me a lot of an iPad, actually. It's about the same size as the iPad Pro, the big one. 12-inch uh, display on this one. 2160 by 1440 display, so a high DPI display. Uh, nice viewing angles on it. The brightness looks a little subdued here under my studio lights, but I've been uh, quite pleased with how nice it looks in normal environments when reading and web browsing and whatnot. So uh, overall, just a beautifully constructed device here that really is only as thick as its headphone jack is. It's a very, very slim device, uh, yet it's got a lot of horsepower under the hood. Now this is the M5 version. It's powered by that Intel Core M5. Uh, there's also an Intel Core M3 version, which will be slightly slower than what you're about to see here. Uh, this one costs about $1,000 as you see it, but I'm seeing the M3 version uh, with four gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage for about $400 on Amazon at the time that I'm recording this video. That might be a closeout or a clearance price, but if you can get at it, uh, go for it. It seems like a pretty good deal for uh, a tablet this nice. Now this one has got the M5, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, $1,000 as configured, and there's a bunch of other configurations you can get at as well. Very lightweight, about 1.4 pounds on its own. That's 640 grams. Uh, there is a keyboard dock you can add into the mix if you wish, and I'll show you how that looks and works in just a second. On the bottom here, you got some pogo plugs for that keyboard adapter. On this side, there's only a single port on this one, which might remind you of another brand's product, so you will need to get uh, some port replicators if you need to get more ports. They've got one here that they sell. It's got Ethernet, USB, and uh, additional power for about an extra $100 or so. It supports VGA and HDMI all also, uh, but other third-party USB Type-C mini docks will also work with this because it is a standard USB Type-C dock. And they also put a fingerprint reader here right on the side in between the volume buttons. So if you look on the side here, it's that little uh, pad right in between the buttons right there. So I can just go ahead and uh, put my finger on there and you can see it automatically unlocks. Really nice uh, fingerprint reader location and it seems to be uh, working pretty accurately. Uh, your speakers are here on the top. Very loud and pretty decent actually for a tablet about uh, what you'd expect out of something like this. Not spectacular, but certainly uh, more than enough for web conferencing and uh, video watching and whatnot. Uh, there is a camera on the front, but not on the back. So you can do your web conferencing, but you will not be taking photos with this uh, out and about. And I've never really wanted to do that, but I know a lot of people do, but you're not going to get uh, a rear camera on this one. And of course, there is the obligatory folio keyboard that you can get as an add-on. I'm seeing prices of this one range from about uh, 50 to $80, depending on where you're looking for it. And it's got a click pad down here and uh, a full-size keyboard. Normally I like very deep travel keys, but this one I'm not crazy about because I'm finding that my fingers are often uh, kind of getting caught in between the push down key and uh, the ones next to it. It really doesn't allow it, it really allow good finger travel here between keys as you can see. You kind of get stuck with it. So it does take some uh, getting used to even though the keys are a nice size, but I do think the surface keyboard is a little better. Uh, the trackpad though does feel pretty nice to me. They have a nice magnetic system here, so all you have to do is get the device close and it will kind of latch on uh, and get itself going there. And then you can fold up the back here to uh, prop up the device on a desk. And you can see it works pretty well as a laptop uh, as a result. So not too bad on uh, that front. I did find though that uh, when you are using it on your lap, like I'm about to do here, it has the same issues that a lot of these other devices tend to have, which is that it doesn't, you know, flops around a little bit. It doesn't feel as uh, stable as it might on a, as a regular laptop might. But the only angle of the screen you're going to get is what you see here. So you can't get it down any lower without the uh, portfolio kind of falling apart on you. So I would have liked to have had a little bit more uh, flexibility as to where I could place the screen, but this is pretty much it. And uh, for me, I'd like to get down just a little bit further on the screen, maybe to something like this, depending on 
uh, my particular situation. So that was the one thing I was disappointed about was the inability to uh, position the screen. But it does fold up very nicely, as you can see here. So you get a very nice, thin portfolio uh, that gives you a keyboard along with a protective case for the device when you're walking around with it. Uh, really nice and very professional and doesn't add all that much weight to the package. And for another 60 bucks, you can buy a uh, stylus that pairs up with this device and it's got the pressure sensitivity, which is pretty nice. So you can see as you uh, push down harder, you get uh, varying degrees of pressure on the brush here. It also has good wrist detection. So as I'm writing things out here, it doesn't see my wrist as I'm doing it. So that's nice to see. Uh, two buttons here on the uh, stylus. So you can have an eraser pop up or you can do a selection. So very similar to what you might get on the uh, surface. Also like the surface, as you get closer to the screen, it begins tracking uh, your position as well. Well. So very similar in, in almost every way to uh, what I, I found with the uh, Surface Stylus earlier. This one also has lasers on it. There's a laser pointer uh, built into the top of the pen so you can scare your animals with it or get them to chase it if you want. Uh, you charge it up via USB, uh, micro USB interestingly, not USB type C, but it charges up pretty quickly and uh, in some ways reminds me of the Apple Pencil and that you can just plug it into USB for a few minutes, get enough power and then uh, keep writing with it. So let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. We'll begin on my YouTube channel with a 1080p 60 video file. Uh, by the way, this has wireless AC built in, so you'll get decent performance on uh, web browsing and other things that will uh, use the internet, so no issues there. Uh, everything does seem to spring up very quickly, and the video here is playing back smoothly. It really looks nice, too, on this display. A nice contrast ratio to the display, very crisp and sharp and clear. A lot better, of course, than many other lower-cost devices we've looked at. And I'll tell you what, if you can find this for 400 bucks on the M3 version, uh, you're going to get a very good deal because this display looks really, really nice. I will go to another website here just to see how well you can uh, do some more basic web browsing. And as you can see, pages pop up very quickly. I can click on uh, a link here and go through the, the, uh, the website here and see things happen very, very quickly. So you will get a very good web performance out of it. I also like to run the Octane benchmark test in Google Chrome to kind of look at a numeric example as to how well these computers stack up against each other. And on that test, we got a score of 25,477, and that compares very favorably to the Dell XPS 12, which is powered by the very same processor that this one has at the moment. So a uh, decent performance out of that. I also want to point your attention towards the score I got on the Microsoft Surface 3. That one came in at 8,069, which is uh, much lower because the Surface 3 is powered by a Atom processor, which is a lot slower, but that Atom processor does give you much better battery life than you're going to get out of this one. So uh, battery life on this one, unfortunately, is only about four hours or so just doing basic stuff like web browsing and word processing. I'm not getting anywhere near the all-day uh, battery life that they're kind of touting in the specifications. So maybe if you turn the display way down and really don't push it all that hard, you could squeeze more out of it, but uh, battery life on here is not so good, even though you get all this great performance. So you, you always have a trade-off, performance or battery life. Uh, they went with uh, performance on this one. So if you are not close to a power outlet, uh, you might have some issues. I also found the battery charged very slowly too, and I don't think it's uh, pushing all that much volt or amperage over its uh, USB port here. So you'll definitely uh, want to plan ahead or have an extra battery with you in your bag if you're going to be away from an outlet for some time. And as expected, it also does very well at other tasks like word processing. So we have our uh, big word template here, and you can see it renders very quickly on on screen. I can take uh, the image here and move it around and get the text to reflow very quickly as well. So uh, not a bad experience for doing word processing and all the other kinds of stuff that you might want to do on a tablet. And again, because this is a Windows tablet, you get the full Windows versions of whatever you're running. So you will be able to uh, run most of your Windows software on here at a, a pretty decent performance rate too, which is quite nice to see. Now let's take a look at some gaming and see how well it might be able to entertain you. All right, so let's start off as usual with Minecraft, and we're getting uh, frame rates uh, above 30 frames per second here, even at its native 2160 by 1440 resolution. This is the uh, Java version of mine Minecraft, so if you have the Windows 10 version, you'll probably get better performance than this. So not too bad on here at all. Uh, you will see some thermal throttling on this particular device because it is so thin. There's not a lot of uh, areas to dissipate heat and certainly no fans. So uh, there are times, and I ran a few uh, uh, little uh, stress tests 
tests and 3D mark on this device, and there are some times when it will throttle back down a bit on you. So you will see some uh, performance irregularities as you're uh, using games with it, but uh, by and large, I think it'll be a good casual gaming experience. And uh, some of the games that I think work best on this are a lot of those independent games you might find on Steam. So a lot of the 2D platformers like Shovel Knight and things like that should work really, really well on here, as well as other games uh, like Minecraft. Let's take a look at one that's a little more strenuous, Counter-Strike Go. All right, so here we are with Counter-Strike Go. I turned down the uh, resolution and just about all of the settings also to give us the best chance of getting something playable on here. It's always tough on these low-powered processors to get that, but uh, here we go. We're getting about anywhere from like 15 to 20 frames per second along with some uh, little silliness in the video uh, rendering here too. So not the best Counter-Strike experience. And again, I don't think this is going to be a uh, AAA game playing machine. This is really better suited for a lot of the more casual stuff like Minecraft and a few of the other games that I mentioned. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 3,982, which is actually a little better than what we saw out of uh, the Lenovo X1 as well as the Dell XPS 12, two very similar uh, tablets with the same processors. So the graphics performance is slightly better on this, even though it might thermal throttle as those devices will as well. So not bad, but still not a triple A gaming device. So let's take a look now at some movie watching. We've got Cody loaded up here. We're going to look at our 4K uh, H.265 HEVC file, and you can see here it's able to uh, get that rendered up here without any drop frames or issues, and that's something that a lot of these Intel chips do quite well. And I've also got a Blu-ray MKV here playing back as well, and that is also uh, running very nicely. So movie watching, for sure, your stuff or things you download from uh, service providers out there should not have any problems playing back on here, and you'll have a very good viewing experience, especially given just how nice this display looks on here. So overall, a spectacular little tablet, at least insofar as its design and performance is concerned. Uh, the big issue you're going to run into, though, of course, with it, as I mentioned, is battery life. So that's the only uh, issue I found here. It really is a uh, really solid device overall, very nicely constructed. Again, I've looked at a lot of tablets this year, and this is probably the nicest Windows tablet, at least from an industrial design standpoint, than I've seen all year. I wish the keyboard uh, folio was a little better, but um, overall, I think this is a pretty good device, especially if you want a handheld tablet that runs Windows 10 at a decent uh, rate of performance and uh, want some nice aesthetics too. I think this is a pretty good choice, and right now, you might be able to get a pretty good deal on one too. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.